Calendly allows its users to embed booking calendars on the website. If you are one of them, you probably want to track those bookings with Google Analytics 4 and see where your conversions are coming from. In this video, I will show you how to do that. Here I have a demo page where the Calendly calendar is embedded and I as a visitor can select certain meeting types and then book a call. So to get started with tracking of these interactions, First, you should go to the description of this video and find a link to a blog post where I explain how to track Calendly embedded calendar. In that blog post, there is a section that contains the listener code. So copy this entire code and then go to Google Tag Manager. Then go to Tags, click New, Tag Configuration, Custom HTML, and then paste that code. In the triggering section, click Anywhere, and then select all pages. Finally, let's name this tag. I usually name it like that. CHTML stands for custom HTML and then I name it Calendly Listener. So this code will be looking for interactions that are happening in the embedded Calendly calendar. And if it spots something, it will make that data and that event available in the data layer. And later in this video, we will use that information. So once you name the tag, add the code and set the trigger, click Save. Now let's test if this is working. Click Preview. This will open a new tab where you have to enter the URL of the page where you want to test the interactions with Calendly Calendar. So let's paste that address, then click Connect, and it will show you that the Tag Assistant has connected. In the Preview mode, we have several events, and one of them is already displayed as Calendly. You can click it, then you can expand this data layer push and we will see that the event is Calendly and the Calendly event is profile page viewed. Now let's interact with the calendar. I will select the meeting and then I have another Calendly event where I have the event type viewed. Then let me select the time and date. That will dispatch another Calendly event, date and time selected, and then I can enter some information like name, email, and so on. And then I schedule the event. After this, I can go back to Calendly and I see that the event is event scheduled. So we have a bunch of different events and we can send them to Google Analytics. So first of all, we definitely want to access this value right here because we could send the event which is called Calendly event scheduled or Calendly date and time selected. So to do that, we have to create a data layer variable which is exactly this, Calendly underscore event. So I will copy it and then go to variables in Google Tag Manager, go to user defined variables, new, variable configuration, and then data layer variable. Here I will paste that and then I will name this variable. So it's very important that here you enter exactly the value that is displayed right here. So let's click save. Then we will also want to fire our Google Analytics 4 event tag every time a Calendly event is visible on the left sidebar of the preview mode. To do that, we have to create a custom event trigger. So let's go to Google Tag Manager, Triggers, then New, Trigger Configuration, and then select Custom Event. Here we have to enter the exact value that is right here, Calendly. And then let's name this trigger like that. Click Save. Finally, let's send that data to Google Analytics 4. So go to Tags. In this video, I presume that you have already installed Google Analytics 4 with Google Tag Manager, which means that you have the GA4 configuration tag. If you don't have that yet, then check the description of this video where I explain how to install GA4 with GTM. So once you have the configuration tag, then click new, tag configuration, and then GA4 event. In the configuration tag field, select your config tag, and here we need to come up with some event. In this case, I would recommend having all events to start with Calendly, then underscore, and then the value of this right here. So it might be this, or this, or this. So let's do it like that, Calendly, underscore, and then let's insert the variable that returns the type of the event. So click this button and then select the data layer variable. 
We don't need any parameters in this case because our event names are quite clear. So in the triggering, click anywhere and then select the custom trigger. Finally, let's name this tag and then click save. Now let's test if everything is working properly. Click preview in Google Tag Manager to refresh the preview mode and fetch the latest configuration of the container. Then we already see the first Calendly event. If I click it, I can see the event tag fired. I can click it here. And then if I switch to values, I will see the event name, which is Calendly profile page viewed. Now let's select the booking time. So I click this and then I see in the preview mode another Calendly event. Here the tag has fired, I can click it, and that is the second event. Now let's go and select time and date, then another Calendly event should appear, and that event name is Calendly date and time selected, and finally I can enter something here and schedule the event. And now the final Calendly event will appear, the tag fired, and this is the event. So now let's check if the data was properly received by Google Analytics 4. So go to GE4, then admin, and then debug view. Here you should see a feed of events, and some of them are related to Calendly. If you want, you can track the event scheduled event as a conversion, because that's the most important event when it comes to Calendly. So to do that, you could just highlight this, copy it, Oh, sorry, not that event, this event. Let's copy it. Then let's go to conversions, new conversion event, and paste that event right here. But it looks like this did not work. So let me just enter the event name manually. Calendly underscore event underscore schedule. If you are using different event names, then you need to enter that particular event, case sensitive, exactly as it is displayed in this field and click save. So now let's say after 30 seconds, maybe after one minute, I could try to book another call. And then in the debug view, the schedule event will look a bit different because it will be treated as a conversion. If you want, we can try to do that. So I will go to the debug view, then I will go to the site, I will refresh it, and then I will book another call. So let me select the date, time, then enter some values and schedule the event. And here we see some Calendly events incoming. And here is our conversion. So after 24 hours, sometimes maybe even after 48 hours, because GE4 needs more time to process the data, these Calendly events will appear in your regular event reports. For example, if you go to reports, keep looking for reports that mention something about events. In your situation, the sidebar and the reports might look different, but just keep looking for something related to events. For example, you can expand here. Well, nothing about events, then expand here. And well, here I have the events report. And if I click it, I would see those Canly events right here. However, keep in mind that 24 hours must pass. And in my case, they haven't passed yet. Therefore, I don't see that event. But tomorrow, I would see those events here or maybe they are like in the second page. So you can go to the next page until you find them. And since we have configured the event schedule conversion, you could also keep looking for reports that are related to traffic acquisition, for example. Let me maybe select a longer time period. And then here in the conversions column, so you should scroll horizontally to the right. And here in the conversions, you could select that Calendly conversion event. All right, here it is. So if you select it right here, then you would see some numbers and you could see which traffic sources are bringing you the most bookings. But again, I see zeros because I just started collecting this data, so I don't have much. And that's how you can track Calendly booking form submissions with Google Analytics 4 and Google Tag Manager. If you found this video useful, hit the thumbs up button below the video. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics 4, then consider subscribing to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.